I was much older then, I am much younger than that now, Bob Dylan said. And I would say I was much heavier then, I'm much lighter now. Not heavy as in like kilograms or pounds or stones, whatever is your favorite metric unit, but in baggage, you know, like the stories, the heartbreaks, the losses, all the things that we drag along with us on our journey. And youth, I've come to learn, is the ability to let go of this baggage at different moments in your life. It also saves you a lot of products and Botox and all of that fun stuff. Many years ago now, I uh, diagnosed myself with what I call the JC syndrome. The JC syndrome is a tendency to basically carry the weight of the loss and the pain and the suffering of the world on your back. You know, It is also the deluded belief that if you carry the weight and the suffering of the whole world on your back and continue to suffer yourself and deny yourself any kind of pleasure or joy, that somehow all suffering will end. I mean, why not? More than 2,000 years ago, there was a Jesus Christ. Why can't there be a Jasmine Christ 2,000 years later, you know? And of course, it doesn't matter that this strategy was entirely futile. In fact, you know, it has proven to be deadly, bloody, and devastating. It doesn't stop people from using or applying the savior model, do we? Somehow it's like deeply embedded in us, this belief. Now, but what does, that, what does that mean for someone like me that has the tendency to carry the weight and pain of the world on our shoulders? Some of us call us empaths, empaths. It also means that some people can perceive you as heavy. It is especially true for people who haven't lived through such experiences. And I encountered this phenomenon, this heavy phenomenon, a few years back when I dated my first white English partner. And this white English partner of mine kept you know, very quickly started to accuse me of being heavy as if it's a negative thing. And then started to tell me that I just love misery. Oh, you love misery, they used to say. You just love being sad. You, you, don't, you, don't, wanna, you don't wanna actually be happy, do you? I don't, think, I don't actually think you want to be happy. I think you really love being miserable. You know, I think that you read the news about the refugees coming over and all the terrible news in the world uh, just to feel sad because you just enjoy feeling sad. And you know, being who I am, I took it really personally and I, you know, took myself aside and, and deeply reflected on it. Am I really a miserable person? Do I really enjoy misery? Do I actually not want to be happy? Is it true? And then I realized, you know, it's really not that easy, is it? To take yourself away from the comforting and familiar sounds of exploding missiles and hungry crying babies and the sights of people rummaging through the trash because there's no food to eat, you know? You know, sometimes if you've grown up through five wars and devastating sanctions and all sorts of like family problems, somehow misery does stick on you because misery can look like home sometimes or home can look like misery. It's quite deceptive, isn't it? And it's not so easy to be able to tear yourself away from this familiarity, even though it is quite a difficult reality to um, hang on to. Now, I just want to say that I'm not saying that I generally don't find it difficult to enjoy myself sometimes. It is really difficult sometimes to enjoy myself and have a frivolous time and just, you know, run through the meadows and let the wind tickle my face as I carelessly smile. And it's true, I do that sometimes. But thinking of the starving children in Yemen, or thinking about my family and friends that have just endured a one of the largest blasts in history in Beirut when 2,700 tons of ammonium nitrate exploded in the Beirut port. You know, carrying all these things around is quite heavy. So my suggestion is that why don't we redistribute suffering? You know, we talk a lot about redistributing wealth, but how about we redistribute some of that sorrow and suffering? I think it is a brilliant idea because you know what? Then it means that some of us don't need to carry all the weight of the world's tragedies and sorrows by ourselves. And then perhaps we can all be lighter and more joyous. So how about, this is my suggestion, how about we actually create legal and safe passages for people to cross over to places where there is just a lighter, more peaceful existence. And this way people can, you know, the suffering in the world can actually re be redistributed and there'll be maybe less heaviness in one individual and um, maybe then there'll be a chance that we can actually meet and maybe then my relationship with my white English partner in the past could actually have um, succeeded. I just wanted to talk about this, you know, 
Some of us are heavy because we've had gone through very difficult experiences. And that's not to deny that other people who have not lived through wars and these kind of extreme situations have not actually lived difficult experiences. It's just to say that sometimes some experiences are heavier than others. But you know, we can share. And we can all be lighter. I'm Yusmi Ali Shugrawi. See you soon. Thank you.